All right, for the past few months, we have been reporting about the new additions of the Ferris wheel and the aquarium over at Union Station. But this is far from the historic site's first renovation. Kristen Cornett takes us on a tour of the history of Union Station in this week's St. Louis Proud. If you were coming from the west to go to the east, you couldn't go past St. Louis and vice versa. So St. Louis was the end point for all train traffic on both sides of the Mississippi. The very first train pulled into Union Station on September 1st, 1894. And over the next several years, it became the busiest train station in the United States. During the height of World War II, we would have 150 passenger trains a day. A regular day's capacity of more than 100,000 people was normal and its gorgeous grand hall was the main waiting room. Its 65-foot barrel vaulted ceiling at one time featured a two-ton wrought iron chandelier. It was sold for $22 to fund the war efforts. During the war years, we would have a lot of celebrities come through that were um, selling war bonds. Joan Crawford, Joe DiMaggio, Kirk Douglas, and Harry Truman are just a few that came through Union Station. It's really beautiful. The Grand Hall features historic touches like the original green glazed terracotta bricks, stained glass windows, and wooden carpentry detailing. Something tells me that when the tile worker originally laid this fish mosaic, he had no idea that over a hundred years later, Union Station would have its own aquarium. The fascinating thing about this place would be that it was built in two years. Um, your, the work that you see is done without power tools. It's all done with artisans from the Eastern European sector um, that you just can't duplicate. Apparently, the designer had a thing for sevens. In the Grand Hall, you'll see the seven ladies as well as the seven arches. When you were at Union Station, the arches meant two or three things. One, that's a doorway. Two, it's a fireplace. Or three, that it's a water fountain. Our water fountain in the market area is the original. It dates back to 1894. It's located in what was the women's waiting area. Apparently the men's water fountain, which no longer exists, wasn't nearly as fancy. Only one of two train stations in the country had its own hotel. St. Louis was one of them. I'm standing in the original atrium of that hotel and check this out. This is the original glass floor. Its entire purpose to let light into the community bathroom, which was just below me. The hotel served railroad personnel and travelers passing through. Apparently, this was not a fancy place at the time, but you'd never know that by the beautiful design of the communal spaces. The last train was Halloween. It left on the evening of October 31st, 1978. And then what happened to this place? Uh, it went dormant. In 1980, the famous fight scene from Escape from New York was filmed in the Grand Hall. Where our aquarium is now was originally a mall. It opened up in 1985, had over 100 stores at one point in time, and then would slowly decline to 2006. And then a new buyer came along in 2012 with the vision to repurpose it into what it is today. In the Grand Hall, to see the new and modern, just look up. From 5 to 10 p.m. at the top of the hour, you can catch a 3D light show. It's the first of its kind in the U.S. Various animations are projected across the vaulted ceiling and set to music. A far cry from the days of old when train travel through St. Louis tied the country together. In downtown St. Louis, Kristen Cornett, News 4.